Hello, this is Aaron from Lo-Fi and DIY, and I'm going to attempt to show you how to uh, put my conversion kits onto 110 style cameras. This particular camera, they're actually also known as Type 40 cameras. This particular roll film Polaroid camera, okay, is a Type A, but there's also the Type B, and there's also just the regular 110. Um, there's a, a 120 commercial model that works as well. So one big difference between my style of kit and other kits that may be available out there is mine is designed to be non-destructive. Not all kits are non-destructive. Some have you uh, use a Dremel and cut off certain parts of the metal or carve things down to make things fit. Uh, certainly that was the case with the uh, pack film era of conversion on these cameras. Um, the reason we're converting them, so many people are converting them, is they've got really nice glass, but the film is no longer made. Okay, so in order to do my kit, it's quite simply two pins that need to be released, two hinge pins. And I'm going to first off, I'm going to open this up so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay. The hinge pins I'm referring to, okay, the one to the left, you can see right here, there's a hinge pin in there. And by the way, this is a dummy camera, so there's no lens in it. I'm just using it for sake of, of this demonstration. Okay, and this is a hinge pin to the right. Now the hinge pin to the right is challenging. The hinge pin to the left is fairly simple. Um, if you are lucky, you'll run into a situation where the hinge pins are fairly easily removable, but be aware that sometimes these can get quite um, corroded in here. So maybe maybe a little WD-40 or, or sewing machine oil or something right in there might help a little bit to get the, the hinge pin released. Okay, um, since this particular hinge pin, it's right up here. Okay, since this top hinge pin here on the right hand side has this viewfinder over it, Originally, when I was doing conversions, I actually pulled the viewfinder off, and that's it's an ordeal in and of itself to remove the viewfinder every time uh, because the pin is underneath this. And so, of course, that could be a challenge to get that pin out because you can't tap it from the top because it's hitting it into the plastic here. Um, so I've come up with a very simple solution, or at least it works for me. And I include this with the kit Basically, if you have a binder clip, binder clips like this, this is a binder clip. If you have a binder clip, you can actually pry this element off of it, one of the arms. That's what this is. Okay. And now what you can do is you can go ahead and put that right, kind of going around this here. Can put that right into that hinge area and then you take a, um, a flathead screwdriver but hopefully one that's a, a little wider like this okay and then what you're going to do is go to the, uh, the metal right here and just kind of twist like this and you're pushing the binder clip into the top of the hinge. And then the, uh, let's see, you can see there. You're pushing this, using this, not pressing into the plastic, but, but prying against the metal that's under here. You see this metal right under here? Just give it a nice gentle pry downward. Actually, even a smaller screwdriver might work nicely too. But then once you've pried it down, okay, then you can go ahead and pull the pin from underneath because the pin has actually come out a little on the bottom side. And so now I can take my needle nose pliers, get them right on that, 
and slide the pin right out. Okay, the pin came out. Now I can remove this side and I can put that in a box and label it saying that it's from this camera. Now we're going to go to the other side, which is, like I said, it's a little bit easier. Now what you can do is you can actually take the other pin. And by the way, do be, do be careful if you're going to do it this way. Take the other pin and set it right on top of that. And then tap down on it with something. I said be careful because of course we're going to reuse these hinge pins so you don't want to destroy them. Okay, and now if you can see right here, that one should easily come out. Okay. Okay, so that one came out. Make sure you're keeping the left hand side pin on the left hand side and the right hand side pin on the right hand side as they are not exactly the same size. You could probably force them in, but uh, it's a lot easier if you put them back where they came from. Okay, so now I've got those out and now I'm going to start the process of installing the 4x5 conversion kit. Okay, this is the 4x5 conversion kit. This is part of it, the biggest part. Um, first thing I'm going to do, as you see this hole right here, I'm going to weave a uh, zip tie through that hole. So on the bottom side here, you can see that. Okay, um, but through a bar on the camera. Easiest way as I can describe it is just simply it's a bar right there. Okay, and so what I do is I go ahead and I'm going to bend this end up a little bit and try to weave it underneath this bar. I can use my newly acquired hinge pin to help me with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it wants to get trapped under this metal shield. So that's why it's hard to get it in that bar the first time easily. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and weave that on through that portion again. And I'm bending the tip of this so that it'll go through. Got it started here. And then I'll feed it through like this and start tightening it down. And as I'm tightening it down, I'm starting to position it where it goes. And so now 
I'm going to go ahead and coax it into place. Now it's snapped in the, the front there. Tighten this down just a little bit more here before I get, get further along. Okay, so this is fairly tight now. Like I said, we can keep going, but um, it's fairly tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that hinge pin, the front hinge pin, the actually I should say the the right hinge pin, right in this orientation. So let's go ahead and put that in. And don't, uh, don't feel bad if your hinge pin doesn't go in quite that easy, because usually they don't. So you need to tap them a little bit. Invest in a ball-peen hammer. Okay. So... One thing to notice here is I've got this fairly recessed. Let me tap the rest of the way in. Okay, so this is fairly smooth here, but I've made space for you to be able to grip that and pull it back out to the needle nose pliers later on. So when you want to reverse, or if you want to reverse the kit, it's easy enough to do. Now that we've done that, I can go ahead and tighten this down the rest of the way. Just remove any any wiggle room. Okay, it's feeling pretty snug. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and snip that off. Okay. Now next, going to go ahead and put this hinge pin back in on the left hand side and just go ahead and slide that through okay so now that I've got the hinge pin on I've got two zip ties I have to feed through to hold this piece on So I'm going to feed this up this way, up through here, between the hinge pin and the body, like that. And I'll do the same thing with this top area right here. Again, that orientation. And don't be too discouraged if you don't get it right the first time. It is actually, this part is kind of annoying and tricky. But once you get it in place, it's good. It just, it's annoying and tricky to set it up. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and feed those through this slot like this. And see how that goes in there. Okay. And then that will slide into a portion right back here that locks into a part of the other body, the other, other piece here. Okay, I'm gonna pull this up just a little further. Okay, do the same thing on this side. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and run the strip through. So I'm running the strip through. same here. OK, 
Okay, now I'm holding it in place and I'm going to tighten this up. Okay. And squeeze it down a little and tighten it a little bit more. Okay. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is trim this. Once I've trimmed these off, I can kind of push that in a little. Okay. Not perfect, but you get the idea. And get that trimmed right in there. Okay. So now we have the back installed. We have the back installed, okay, and when you have the, the back installed and you have the, the um, like let's say this is your ground glass, and by the way I don't sell these with, I sell ground glass, but I don't sell these with the ground glass, because some people already have some, and I make mine out of plastic so it's not exactly great, but it does the job. But when you actually have this locked in place, when you actually have this locked in place like that, you can see you can still see through the viewfinder. Okay. So now it's ready and you can see through the viewfinder just fine. Okay. Now the next thing is, since, since obviously it's kicked out higher than where the original film plane was, I include lens stops. I have an example here with me. Okay, this pathfinder here has a uh, lens stop already in place. Okay. This piece of plastic right here Okay, allows you to when you're when you're setting your front standard, you pinch this and you pull it along. It actually will lock onto that. So now you can do your focusing and everything, and it'll follow right along. And it's now it's completely set. Okay, there's two different styles. And I'll uh, I have some examples here. Okay. There's two different styles. Um, one style goes for the, uh, the 110, like this. Okay. And I believe the 120 actually has the same front uh, piece. Um, but the 110A and 110B actually have a different shape. I'm going to show you just a couple simple examples. Now, depending on what back you get, these are going to be different lens stops. So like this one right here is for this 110. Okay, this one right here is for the uh, 110A and B. Okay, and the way they work is they have adhesive on the back. You see how really, really skinny they are. The reason they're really skinny like this is when I make these, I want them to be able to fold up so the camera can still fold up. Okay. If you have a thick lens stop, that camera is not going to be able to close. But this one here, you can actually close it. Okay. And then you can open it right back up. And then pull it right into place. Okay. Like I said, this is the type. Now, the easiest way I find to orient this is there are two little rivets, and I have these little little circles cut out right here. Okay, you line the circles up with the rivets right there and there. Okay, and then basically just tape it in place. And you'll notice that everything else just fits when you line up the rivets. Okay. 
So basically, once you've made those two changes, the lens stops, which is just literally something you tape on, and this, which uses the original hinge pins plus three zip strips, you basically have a functioning camera at the new film plane. Now, I actually have uh, several different styles. I have this is a, a, a 4x5 style, graph lock 4x5 that we just set up. I have a, a style that's actually Instax wide style. Now again, when you see this white, that's just my prototyping. It's all going to be black on black, okay? But the Instax wide, this is the main bulk piece. Um, and then you, you saw basically the other piece is exactly the same as for the uh, 4x5 goes on this side here. But it's no harder to install the Instax wide version as it is to install the 4x5 you just saw. I also have a 2x3 style. Okay, the 2x3, you install it pretty much the same way. Okay, put the pins through. And then this actually attaches to it. And it's pretty much the same type of install that attaches on the 2x3. Okay. And finally today, this is a little different, but it's it's all fairly fairly similar. I have an eye type, and again, it's going to be black. It's not going to be white. But this piece right here has the battery enclosure in it, and has the power on this part here. Okay, and then this piece right here, as the, the film door opens. And the only things that you have to remember about this that are just a little bit different is this right here. This pushes your film door open and closed. When you've got that pin through there, the pin runs through this little switch and it'll hold it so that when you do this, when you slide this, it could easily open the film door. Okay. So once you have the pin in place, this just slides and then that opens the film door for you. That's just one thing you have to do and that's not terribly hard. And the other one is just simply there's a wider channel here. And when you're sliding everything in place, you simply make sure you're not pinching that wire. That's pretty much it. And then you will have the eye type version. Okay. Want to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. I will be doing other videos that are more specific on actual use of all these. Um, so please stay tuned for that. Thank you and have a wonderful day.